Hi, Mary Beth. Thanks for waiting. I know it was a problem getting the uh, videos uploaded so I could see them. So I like to see them loose so I can see what they naturally do and how they move. And I'm glad you sent me different clips. So here he's just pacing and he's got a lot of tension in his neck and his back. That's how he's going towards that pace. And it looks like he can canter a little bit, so that's pretty good. But here as he's going around, he's just mostly pacing, although he doesn't look like he's super bouncy when he's pacing, because usually those ones, their back comes up a lot more. So now you're going the other direction. He's pacing here as well. And then he fell into a trot. Now he's got a beautiful trot. He reaches out and it looks like he's gotten some overstride with the trot. But as soon as he paces, he tenses up his back and his lower neck and he shortens that stride a lot. Now he does seem pretty hilarious that he came down here and went over the jump. And he's a cute jumper, like what a cute jumper, tucked his knees and everything. So he looks like he's got talent. He can use his body pretty well, but when he's loose in the round pen, he's shortening that stride way too so this much. This was the short arena video. So I think this was from a different date. So here he's mostly, he's mostly step pacing. You might think it's a running walk, but it's not. It's not horrible, but it's not the best he can do. And I know he can do better because of what I saw him do loose. So here he looks like he has too much tension in his neck and his back to me. So he's got to relax his neck and his back and we got to get him to bring his head lower so we can lengthen that stride a lot more. And then you'll get a more beautiful head shake and you'll start getting some overreach and he'll start gliding a lot more. So it's nice, it looks like you either trained him well or he came to you trained. He stands at the mounting block and the turns on the forehand that you did with him looked pretty good. So as you start off here, he starts off a little bit of a trail walk and then he started going more up into his flat walk. And right about there, it starts being more of a flat walk. And so if you watch him as he's walking here and I'll slow it down, you can see he's reaching up into his front hoof pocket as that front hoof is leaving the ground. And we might be able to get him to lengthen his stride a little bit more as well. But he does have a lot of tension up in that neck and the back. So he's not reaching under himself as much as he could. But it's not bad. Okay. And your speed is pretty good. He's got pretty good separation of his legs when you're doing this flat walk and he's keeping the same speed and rhythm there. I think this is where you did your turn on the forehand. Yeah. So the only thing when you do your turns, cause I'm just not sure if you're doing a turn on the forehand or you're just turning around. If you're just turning around, that's perfectly fine. If you wanna do the turn on the forehand, I would hold him more so he pivots on his front end. So he does have a nice head shake, but again, I can tell he'd have a better head shake if we got his back and his neck to relax more, but he still has pretty good separation of his legs. So here you're at a standstill. There's your turn on the forehand. And I would just, you might be moving because of the camera, but otherwise I would keep him still, finish the turn, and then you could start moving forward again. So again, he's got good separation of the legs here. He's got a good footfall, but I would like to get him more relaxed. And uh, we'll go back into it after I see everything that you're going to do here. So this time when you stopped, I wasn't sure if you were doing the turn on the forehand or the haunches, because to me, it looked like you were pushing him over with your left leg and you were pushing towards his shoulders. But you'll see he kind of backs up his shoulders move, then he moves his hind quarter. So he did kind of half a turn on the haunches and half a turn on the forehand. 
So we just want to make sure that if that's not what you were trying to do and you were trying to do a turn on the forehand, that he's clear about which leg he's supposed to move off of and that you're only using one leg. So if you were doing the turn on the forehand, it's right rein and right leg. If he's not moving his hindquarter, I would carry a dressage whip. And then what I would do is if he's not moving that hindquarter over, you know, keep your hands on the reins, have a long dressage whip, and then just tap him behind your leg. And that'll help him to get that turn a little bit better. So here it looked a little bit to me like you were using your left leg and then I saw you go to your right leg and rein. But he's a little bit confused on what he's supposed to be doing so we wanna just be a little bit clear to him. So here as you start going faster, he should have a running walk at this point so it should have went from a flat walk to a running walk but he kind of went into a step pace it's not a hard pace it's not horrible it actually looks somewhat smooth um, but as he's doing it again he's high headed which is okay if the horse is using his body correctly but he has looks to me like he has too much tension in his back and in his neck so he's kind of short striding and he's moving those legs more together and even though the back one is landing before the front one most of the time he is doing more of a step pace okay so i think he would have a beautiful running walk but we got to get his flat walk better get him to relax keep those legs separated and then your running walk should feel just like your flat walk, except it's going to be faster. And then once we get those done, then instead of having this step pace, we should have a saddle gate or what you call a saddle rack or a slow rack, okay? But here, you can tell he's not doing it um, so well because the legs are moving too close together with each other. And again, when they do that saddle gate, you're gonna see some bounce in their tail because he's going to get a little bit more hawk action and the croup's going to kind of go up and down and then the tail will go up and down. Now, as you go back and forth, it does get a little bit better. He does get more separation of the legs and then he goes more towards a running walk and you'll see he starts shaking his head more. So he has a little shake in his head right there, but his legs are moving too much together most of the point part. And so we got to get him to relax his neck and his back, separate those legs, and then your gates are going to be so much better. You are a very good rider. It looks like you've taken lessons. You got your shoulders over your hip, your heel underneath your hip, your reins are short enough, your eyes are up. I mean, it's a beautiful picture. And again, it's a beautiful horse, but I think we can get him gating a lot better than what he's doing here. This was one little clip right here. That's where he was moving the best. So watch when his head goes down, how he reaches out more and how his stride gets longer. That's what we're aiming for. And the hard part is as he goes a little bit towards that step pace and a pace, he doesn't look to be a hard pacer. So it's not very jarring. Some people will like bounce up and down in the saddle or they'll be bouncing sideways. He's not doing it that some, you know, very much. And you are moving back and forth in the saddle. He does have some head shake, so it would trick people like, yeah, that's a running walk. But he should have some overreach with those back legs and the stride should not be as short as it is. Again, it would the stride will be short when we do the saddle gait, but he's not really doing a true running walk or a saddle gait at this point in time. Now here as he's going around, I know he's looking at stuff, but he was getting a little bit more separation of his legs. He parks out well. Hopefully they showed you the cue for that and he's not just doing it on his own. Otherwise call up the seller and ask what the cue was for him to park out because some people push on their withers or push on their neck for that cue and it's helpful to know so you're not parking him out by accident. 
Here again, he's just kind of short striding as he's going around. I can't tell if your arena is slanted at all. So let me know that because anywhere it goes downhill, that'll make them a little bit more pacey and then we'll have to keep them slower. Now you see, he's got some head shake there, but it's not a true running walk. We still need more separation of those legs, although it is better than it was before because he was more step pacey before. Okay, so what I would start to is bringing him back a little bit uh, to the fundamentals so he understands exactly what we want him to do. So if he doesn't know it already, I would teach him lateral flexion and vertical flexion. And I would do that at a standstill because first we got to start with his neck and his back. And so I would teach that at a standstill. Once he can do that lateral flexion, you do the vertical flexion. And I want you to give every time you get him to tuck his head in. And then as you're doing it, I want you to try to get his head lower and lower. So even though walking horses can gate with their heads up this high just fine, we need for at least this point in time to get his head a lot lower so we can get his neck and his back to relax. Once we get that consistent and we get his gates, once we get him to lower his head consistently and get his gates better, then we can always raise his head back up. But right now we need to lower his head to get his spine to relax so we can get his gait better. So you're going to do vert vertical flexion. And what I want you to try to do is get the top of his head way down. So you'll see now it's located up at your chest. Here's the top of your saddle about here. I want you to get the top of his head down here. So that's a lot lower. So the best thing to do is to do it at a standstill first, get him to understand vertical flexion. And then as you're doing it with him, try to get it lower and lower until you can see kind of over the top of his head and you make sure it's kind of level with that saddle, okay? After you do that, I'd like you to just walk around a plain walk and then stop, get his head down and make sure he gives to that bit and he does vertical flexion each time and he gets that head low. Once you can do that, where you can walk around and every time you stop, he stops and puts his head down, then I want you to try to keep his head down at just a regular walk. So again, I want you to keep the top of his head kind of level with your saddle or a little bit lower, okay? Every time he drops his head, release a little bit. If he keeps popping it way back up, you're gonna have to hold more pressure and only release a couple of millimeters with your fingers, not very much. And then once he figures it out, you'll be able to release more. But some of the horses that have been ridden with their heads high, you have to hold a lot of pressure to get them to bring that head down and to keep it down. Then what I want you to do is an arena routine, which I'll send you if you didn't see it on my website. And I want you to walk and do lots of circles. And I want you to do leg yielding and the serpentine and all those exercises to get him to relax the, his top line more and to get him to reach underneath himself. So the lateral movements like the circle, the leg yield, the serpentine, all those things are gonna help to get him to relax. But I want you to do that at the walk. I don't want you to do that at the flat walk, okay? So as slow as he can go. So you're going to do those exercises in both directions. Once you've done that, you can stop and give him a break. And then what I want you to do is we're going to go to those, his flat walk. And we're going to do that for about five minutes in each direction. What I would do with him, though, is set up the poles. And I'll send you videos on this. But I would just set up... Four, four poles for now. And you're going to set it up like a clock. So put it in a big circle, like a maybe a 15 meter circle. And you're going to put a pole at 12, 3, 6, and 9. And what I want you to do is walk that horse over that circle for five minutes. Okay. The poles are going to help to separate his legs. He'll have to look down for the pole. So it might help him to get his head lower and it's going to increase his strength and it will get him to reach more. If as you're doing those poles and you can send me an updated video, if you don't think anything's changing, 
or he's still shortening that stride, then we might add some more poles and put um, poles instead of just at 12, 3, 6, and 9, add poles in between all of those because that will help him to separate his legs. And we're not going to do that forever. It's just to get his footfall and get him using the correct muscles, okay? Just five minutes each direction. And I want you to do that for the next two to three weeks. Don't worry about his running walk yet. Because first we got to get him to doing this correctly. Now you can also do it without you riding him. We can lunge him over poles and I'll send you videos of that. And if you do it with him, if he doesn't naturally put that head down or he keeps doing that step pace and pacing, I would put him in a sur single with side reins because we want it to help him to learn to get that head down and to relax his, his neck and his back to help us to get his gait better. Okay, so if you do it on the lunge line, same thing, five minutes each direction. Once he gets good at it, then we're going to ask him to speed up and do his running walk and just do it in the beginning, three minutes in each direction after you've done the flat walk first for five minutes each direction. Okay, so you can alternate that with riding too, especially if you don't have a lot of time. Doing those things will teach him to use the correct muscles and help him to understand what we want him to do under saddle. Once we have him flat walking well and he's reaching up a little bit more and we have that head much lower, then we can start to add in his running walk. So I would expect with him, it would take probably two or three weeks before we should try that. And again, you can send an updated video and I'll say, yes, now you're ready or no, we're not even close. We got to get him to relax more. But once we have it good, then you, you're going to do that whole arena routine. And then when you're riding over the poles, flat walk each direction five minutes, give them a break. And then you're going to go back to your flat walk for once around. And then we're going to try to add more speed and take him up to his running walk. And it's just going to be a little bit faster than you were going when I saw you doing your flat walk here. Okay, so just a couple miles per hour more. Again, if he starts... Uh, shortening his stride or step pacing more and say you only had the four poles, then we will add more poles in to help him to separate his legs. Keeping him bent around the circle, so using that inside rein and leg, will also help him. Anytime he tries to lower his head, release, tell him he's a good boy, give him a rub on his neck, but keep him walking over those poles. And then I want you to do that for several weeks at least and then show me what you have. Once we can get him doing that well over the poles and he can do both the flat walk and the running walk, then we can start to pull some poles out. And as long as he's continuing to hold his gait and keeping the same speed, then over time we will slowly pull more and more of the poles out. Okay, so we're not using the poles forever. It's just kind of like a an exercise we're using to get him stronger and getting him to understand what we want him to do. Once we can get your flat walk and your running walk without the poles, then we can start adding in his next speed, which will be a saddle gait. And that will be more similar to what you're doing here, where his stride is shorter and he will be more in this frame, but we need to get more separation of those legs for it to be a correct saddle gait or a smoother saddle gait. And that's when we'll see more bouncing in his tail. His head won't shake when we do the saddle gait and we'll kind of see more flexion in his hocks here and we'll see uh, some higher elevation in his knees when he's doing it correctly. And I just posted that saddle gait video so you can look at it and see what I'm talking about. So I think this is a beautiful horse. He's very nice. He's full of talent. He has much more talent than he's showing you here. And I think it, we can get a much better gait out of him. But we do want to get him more relaxed and get him in a more neutral frame where he's more comfortable and then he can reach under himself more.